Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and this is day 11 of my book read. Let's get going. So in this one we're going to be talking about 3AM games that can be made into books. If you don't know what 3AM game is, it's essentially where you play at a certain time. There are times where you have to play exactly at 3AM it could be, or it could be at 12 a.m., whatever. And then you're essentially trying either to contact the spirit or you're trying to play with them, talk to them, or sometimes you may be contacting a demon. So, some of the games would sometimes have a wish. And as always, be careful what you wish for. Let's get And so my first one is the runner. This one is actually quite interesting and as the title of itself you have to be a runner otherwise it's practically game over for you so it's not it's, so it's kind of a high risk just because of that um it's definitely a little bit creepier uh, because it involves blood which is a dangerous uh, from both the blood magic perspective and a straight up health run for none that the cost of losing can be high and for a third the temptation to accept a challenge to a rematch can be strong so, so how it goes is basically you need to have like a starting line from end to finish in, in whatever place it could be in a tunnel whatever and so once you are positioned behind a starting line you have to close your eyes clear your mind and think of your opponent, do not visualize your opponent as a specific person. Just have an idea of what you want as an opponent. So once you hear silence, your opponent unfortunately did not came, and that means the ritual has failed and do not proceed. If you hear a voice next to you, your opponent has arrived and you may proceed. Also, it's very important that you keep your eyes ahead of you. Do not turn to look at him. So then, then it says your opponent, what are the stakes? Double or nothing. Do not say anything else or offer any other response. Do not look at him. And get ready. The race is about to begin. So say aloud on your marks. Get set. Go. As soon as you say go, run. You and your pup must begin running at the same time. Do not begin running before you have said go. You just have to keep running. It's about the race is about less speed and more about stamina. Again, do not look at your opponent. Just run and run from the finish line. If you have finished, if your opponent reaches the first, you have lost the race. Your opponent will be no one to be seen, but no million wager. That is his price and he will take it for himself. If you win, congrats. You have won the race, your opponent will be no one to be seen, but you will find three things waiting for you behind the finish line. Your wager is duplicate and a small piece of paper. The paper will only have a single word on it again. Take your wager and its duplicate, leave the piece of paper. So I think it's really interesting because like I can totally see this as a book and all the high stakes that you have to do and how to prepare yourself to meet this challenge's needs. So I totally see this as a creepy book style. My next one is a Samara Sleepover game. So this is have been inspired by Samara Morgan Off the Ring, which I'm pretty sure that's also a horror movie itself. Uh, so this ring is about 20 years old and has been released in 2002. And this sleepover game is like a variation of Bloody Mary. The kind of similarities between the two games, including the setting, the supplies, and the method. The only difference here is that you're summoning a girl with a bloody, dirty face and black hair named Samara. So she's crawling out of her wall, her well and shambling towards you, although she's been divorced some. So for this room requirements, you need a bathroom, inside a bathroom, a mirror, a safe room located with the safe, same building or area as the bathroom, a tea light or other small candle, matches or a light bulb. 
So you have to begin at night, gather together all the players you want. If necessary, place the mirror inside the bathroom. It should be eye level so you can see your own reflection easily. And then place the tea light in the bathroom, ideal next to or in the mirror. If the mirror is mounted to the wall above amenity or countertop. Place the mattress or lighter within easy reach. If there are curtains, draw them. Exit the bathroom and travel throughout the rest of the building or area in which the bathroom is located. Turn out all the remaining lights as you go except one. Return to the bathroom. Position yourself outside the bathroom door standby. Do not leave your post at any time. And then enter the bathroom, close the door behind you, and prepare yourself. What follows is for you. So again, I think we can do a numerous uh, ideas of the sleepover game. It just sounds so creepy and suspense. You just don't know what's gonna happen. This can be like a great horror book because you're talking to the unknown. So yeah, so you can also so other than there's just so many rules that you have to follow for this t kind of game that can be made into a book and like you have you cannot leave your post you know that you open the door in time and because if you don't open the door in time not even if they put their full weight behind your tent she will not permit it to be open from inside the bathroom if you do not open the door within five seconds or you will find when you finally do open it an empty room. So that just screams like a whole nother dimension to me. So I think it's really great for a horror book. My next one is the whistling and night game. So basically this kind of ties to superstition, myth, however you want to see it. Because that whistling at night is said to attract bad tempered spirits, ill fortune or both, but in Vietnam the two things whistling at night might bring into your home aren't ghosts and bad luck, but ghosts and snakes. What's more, are all the superstitions meant to prevent you from whistling at night? At least one method also exists and geared towards doing precisely what you're not meant to do. That's right. This virtual game, the whistling at night game, will help you summon spirits or ghosts to your home. And maybe a snake depending on who is listening. So, uh, yeah, again, I think there's something similar to an actual horror movie. It's not scream, but like sound in, sound out. Or maybe it might be scream. And it's not, it's not scream 3, 4, 5, not that scream. But something similar, but anyways. So it's just perfect for a book. Because, you know, the spirits might not be, like, not quite in nature, they also might not be. That might be a more hissy. Or if you're just not a long fan of slimming creature, you, then maybe just don't play those games. So, yeah, I think it's just quite fascinating, and I think we can get a lot out of the whistling game. My next one is Lights Out, and I'm pretty sure this is a horror movie, pretty sure. It's a two-player game, but it's a two-player game in the way, like the gamblers game, you're player one. Who or what player two is though? Well, that's harder to answer. And, you know, we always have these, um, play at your own risk, as always. So you just have to travel around the arena as quickly as possible, turning the lights in each room, either on or off, as determined by the status of your starting room. That is, a player's one starting room was set to the lights on status. During the prelude, your goal is to switch all of the lights on. If player one starting room is set to the lights off status, during the prelude, your goal is to switch all of the lights off, and vice versa. So then you have player two who will travel through the room as quickly as possible to turn all the lights room to turn all the lights on to turn off the lights in the room. So we ha you have to continue to do this until you win, or it wins, so it's a race. So in conclusion, if you find a piece of paper which you wish or desire has been written has managed, congratulations, you have won in the coming days, weeks, and years, be on the lookout for certain opportunities which might present themselves to you. And then if you still have that paper that of your wish desire, then you have lost. 
being able to find a piece of paper on which your wish or desire had been written, it still assumes that you're in any state to return to players one starting room in the first place if you lost. So yeah, it's just like, again, kind of one of high stakes again because you have to complete the game as quickly as possible. It gets really more difficult the longer it goes on. The game la the last one of 15 minutes is really likely to end in a losing condition for player one. Player one will achieve the goal of turning all the eyes either on and off within the first five minutes of the game. The longest known playing time which resulted in a winning condition for playing one is 38 minutes. So that's one of the challenges right there that I think could be great for a horror book. So, I think we should all write books based on these games. My next one is probably by far my most favorite one ever. It's kind of a 3 a.m. daily challenge, but kind of not. Um, so this is Taika Taori. So this is like a piece of folklore and mythology that seems to echo. So Taika Taori. It is translated to Winter Magic and in English, according to what the mission seems to accomplish, is calling upon the spirit of winter for a blessing. So this is like in other sources about Finnish mythology, but it's probably the same thing. So I just really love this one because you have to make as many preliminary preparations as possible. You need to have six participants and uh, and secure the process. So basically you have to go make sure you have all the warm clothing you will need to survive and then outside in the snow. And then you wait until a fresh snowfall. Until the night of the full moon. And then you have to gather the fish and pine and branch and retrieve the linen and, and the white thread dress and your warm clothing. Summon your fellow participants and instruct them to go to your chosen location. Meet them there, bring your fish, your pine branch, your linen, and your thread now we may begin. So it's quite fascinating. Like, I can imagine how the spirit is going to help them out in whatever situation they are in. And then the spirit condemns them like, okay, I will just give you a blessing and all that fun stuff. So I think it will be a really cool card. My next one is 11 miles. So basically, so basically you have to find a road and then you drive with your car. And then you have to drive, drive for 11 miles. And you have to begin at night. And it doesn't really say midnight or whatever. So, otherwise, once you reach the mind, you shut off your card and then you sit, uh, think silently as to what your wish wants. And as always, be careful what you wish for. So, again, I think this is a really cool concept for a book just because so many things can go wrong in the middle of the night. You're stranded on the moon why you're making a wish. So it kind of reminds me of um, Five Survival, something like that by Holly Jackson, I think it was. Five Survive. The one where I read there were teenagers who got stranded in a trailer and then things happened. So that kind of reminded me of this concept, but I think it'll be really cool if they included with this wish and then all bad stuff happened. My next one is the Candle Games. And basically you need to have two people, one of them needs to hide the candles around the house and then after that you have to find the candles, otherwise the thing will find it first. So again, same situation, um, it could be a really cool concept, like what if what happens if you don't find it, who knows. But I, I just noticed something bad will happen, that's all I know, but it still makes a really cool concept. For a book, like imagine like there's this time limit, so many things can go wrong in the time limit. So, and obviously we have a supernatural being who probably knows when the place is on, so I think it's still a really nice one. My next one is the closet game. And this is basically why you're summoning something in the closet. You have to have two people and the lighters and candles and you basically one will be in the closet and the other one will also be in the closet as well. Or you, it can be done with one player as well and then basically you have to line up the map and, and there should be no light visible either inside the closet or outside of the stand. Stand in the darkness for at least two minutes, do not move, do not speak. After two minutes are up, hold the match out in front of you, 
Speak to us, show me the light only in the in darkness. Listen closely. If you hear whispers in the dark, light the match immediately. Wait. If you hear nothing, do not turn around. Wait. If you made it this far unscathed, open the closet door, exit the closet, and close the door again. Do not look inside the closet. In fact, don't look inside the closet ever again if you can help it. And especially not without all the lights on burning brightly. So just by that concept, um, we can have like another dimension going on with all the demons are coming out or you are being pulled into that dimension. So I think it's a really, really cool idea for your books. So we have like a dimensions and we have another time limit because of the matches. So I think it'll be fascinating. My next one is the Veronica or Nine Times Veronica. This is almost similar to Bloody Mary. So she appears and mirrors to those who summon her and those like, like she once did herself disrespect the supernatural. Uh, you have to begin before midnight, set up the mirror in the quiet room if it is not already there. You may position it however you like. The only requirement is that you, is that it be upright and a height with which you may comfortably look into it and sees your own reflection gazing back at you. If using position the candle in front of the mirror until lately, you may hold the candle in your hands. Where you position it should be capable of elimin eliminating your face when lit. Close the door so you aren't disturbed. Turn off the lights. Keep an eye on the clock. At precisely midnight, proceed. So again, it's kind of like Bloody Mary. We also have Bloody Mary books anyway, so we can still have that same concept for the Veronica. And um, yeah, so I, be I believe she will... When whenever you're alone, listen carefully. If you hear any noises for which you cannot identify the source, Vacate the premises immediately and think of the company of other people. So that's really a danger right there. You have to be with someone else if you hear voices. Otherwise, you're done. So I think it makes it really, really cool. So you have to keep being on and go until it's too late. My next one is Lady Spades. It's also another one similar to Bloody Mary, except I think this one is Russian. So you have to begin at midnight, enter the quiet dark room, make sure all lights are off, place the candle in front of the mirror, and light it with your matches or lighter. Using a lipstick, write Lady Spades on the mirror, then hold the Queen of Spades in your hand such that she is facing the mirror. Close your eyes, empty your mind, relax as much as you're able. Then repeat the words Lady Spades appear around seven times. Keep your eyes closed and call up the image of Lady Spades in your mind. Do not panic if you hear a woman's voice or laughter on the echo of footsteps nearby. These sounds indicate a successful summoning. Open your eyes. I hope she isn't being summoned when I'm saying all this. Huh. Anyways, um, after this you get to make a wish and all that cool stuff, but... So again, if things went wrong, I imagine her just coming out the window, pulling you in and kind of replacing you for the time being until someone Fine, so hey, wait a minute, she's not that person. So there's also that switcheroo concept as well, which will make a really nice one. So yeah, it's quite interesting to have all these. My next one is the dark reflection, which at least one principle and group is suggested. A mirror, it may be in any type, begin after sunset, but no less than six hours until dawn. Take up your mirror and look at reflection in the eye of three to five seconds. Focusing your attention to, on the negative energy held within the mirror, then hold the glass up to your face and align it in, with your breath. That is, breath onto it such that the mirror fogs up. Repeat this step. After all players have successfully anointed, the mirror with their breath, light the candle with the matches or lighter and hold it to the mirror surface. Once the candle has blackened a small portion of the glass, remove the candle and extinguish it. Break the mirror, releasing the negative energy. Leave the pieces of broken mirror where they are and evacuate the area immediately. And so basically you're supposed to run away from all the bad energy that's supposed to be following you until sunrise. And a lot of stuff can happen until sunrise. So like what if someone got kin kidnapped by the dark energy and they are no longer with them or what happens if there's some kind of switch or move again? when your dark reflection switch places with you until, you know, again, we have one person standing left and they have to find out how to escape the negative energy and while getting you out of the mirror. So 
it will be a really fascinating story to tell and tell standardized they need to be able to finish this otherwise it's finished my next one is dead man's tag so you need at least three people one flashlight one timekeeping begin shortly before dark on a night with a little to no moonlight an overcast cloudy night why night on which new moon falls are ideal. Gather all the participants together with the flashlights and timekeeping devices at the playing field. As a group, decide where home base will be. Home base must be a physical object in the area you can touch. As a group, decide how long you wish to have to hide once the game has begun. The length of time should be measured in seconds. A number between 10 and 100 is recommended. Wait until night has fully fallen. When it is fully dark, Assemble all the participants at home base and face out into the darkness. Choose one person to speak the following incantation. Then the usual you call out together unit. Scatter, run, hide. T using time keeping, refer to them to track how long you have left before it comes looking for you. If not, estimate the passage of time as accurate as possible through your method of your choice. In both cases, use your time wisely. So it's a game of tag with the whatever be the meme is and basically you have to you know run and hide and then after that you have to go to your home base and make sure you touch it so again really cool idea i think a lot of things can go wrong like one of you can be possessed a few person can go missing and the next day you guys are like okay we have to play this again to be able to retrieve all our people so, I think that's also a dangerous situation in itself, and just a really cool idea for your book. And my next, my next one is the epic. So you have to do this if you have a, a possession of certain set of survival kit skills, because you have to play it in the wood. Begin by entering the forest before down with your partners. Form a circle with your partners by holding hands, they allow the incantations. When you hear a crash coming from elsewhere in the forest, run together. Do not get separated from the group. Do not leave anyone behind. So what makes this one so terrifying is that anything could happen because it literally says do not leave anyone behind. If you don't have a fast runner, forget it. You're done. <laughs> so that, that person can go missing and I'm dead and the people can go back to discover the dead body and then one by one just keeps on being mysteri mysteriously disappeared so it'll be a really cool concept so just like how we have you know all those stuck in the woods or in the cabin stories all of that and so yeah so you know you, can, you have to run against the supernatural be picked off one by one if you're not up to it and all that stuff so I think it's a cool idea for a story. And not going to finish all of my 3 a.m. games for a book ideas. Let me know which one you are interested or let me know which one I have missed. Please like, comment, subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. I will see you in my next one. Bye!